everyone welcome back to face it with dr g that's me i'm so excited to have you all we're going to talk about hyaluronidase we use hyaluronidase or we should use hyaluronidase regularly in our practices that's how we create beautiful results we don't build 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 we need to break that filler down and we also need to have it for complications that may arise so there are many different brands of hyaluronidase and the purpose of this is to clarify maybe a little bit of ambiguity in your mind or a little confusion and I just wanted to break it down for you guys. So hyaluronidase, anything with an A-S-E at the end, is an enzyme and hyaluronidase breaks down hyaluronic acid and there's all of this talk about does it break down your native hyaluronic acid? And the answer is really no. There are studies that show histopathology, um, histologically, we don't see a breakdown of our own native HA after hyaluronidase injection. Some may disagree, and if there is a perceived decrease in volume by the patient, that hyaluronic acid will be replenished within about a week. So it's important to just prepare your patients, let them know that if there is a perceived decrease, it'll come back. Fine, great, no worries at all. So hyaluronidase is really used mostly on off-label indications at this point. It is pregnant, pregnancy category C, and it's been around 70 years. It's been around a really long time in fields like ophthalmology and anesthesiology. It's used in drug delivery. Uh, so it's been used widely. And it's important that our patients know it's been widely tested and we are very familiar with it. There have, to this date, arguably, been no cases of anaphylaxis that have been reported or published in the literature. That's also important that we know that it's really safe. And if we have a patient with a bee allergy or a wasp allergy, I do do a little skin test of sorts and we all hear about what that is. So it's three units of Hyal Hyalinex, well, hyaluronidase, we'll get into the brands in a second, hyaluronidase, three units intradermally. Make sure that you mark where you injected because if you don't do that and there's no reaction, well, I guess you just assume there's no reaction, but make sure you mark where you injected. And it's three units intradermally and if within about five minutes you have a wheel that stays for 20 or longer, 20 minutes or longer, that's a positive reaction. Mild erythema or redness or pinkness to the skin is not a positive reaction. So yes, we all know that we need to do these tests, but make sure you're doing it the right way, you're injecting the right amount, and you're reading the test appropriately. So now let's talk about the different types of hyaluronidase, which includes the different brands and their origin. So you can have human recombinant or you can have animal origin. Animal origin, origin is either bovine or ovine testes. So that's where we get our hyaluronidase. Human recombinant is what we use mostly in the United States and the brand is Hylinex and the storage is typically between two to eight degrees Celsius. So keep it in the refrigerator. Animal origin, so we have the ovine origin, and that is vitrace, and that is also stored at two to eight degrees Celsius. Bovine testicular origin, there's three different brand names. You have hyalase, hyalase, and amphidase. Both hyalase and hyalase need to be reconstituted. Hyalase is stored at room temperature. Hyalase is stored at the two to eight degrees Celsius like the others. Hyalase is only off, um, offered in the UK. And then we have amphidase, which is also uh, two to eight degrees Celsius. So in the United States, as I mentioned, we use Hyalinex the most. Some places do use vitrace, but I find human recombinant is the best way to go. So how quickly does hyaluronidase work? And it really depends. It depends on, is this product in the patient's tissues? Is it complicated? Are there nodules? Uh, how long has it been there? What type of hyaluronic acid gel is this? Is it extra cross-linked, Vicross technology, not Vicross technology? What layer is this in, right? So it really depends. But in general, 0.3 milliliters of of hyaluronic acid dermal filler, or 0.3 cc's, 
When given and injected with 30 units of hyaluronidase, it takes approximately 30 minutes to break down. And that's important to understand because historically we have believed, okay, we'll inject with hyaluronidase and we'll wait, come back in a week or two weeks until we see how everything is broken down and dissolved, see if we need to do another treatment or not. Now we're really understanding that it happens much quicker and you can still have practices. I still see my patients back in a week, but it is possible to dissolve and then inject that same day. So when I mentioned that different products take maybe a longer amount of time to dissolve. That is true. And I encourage you in your practices to get a Petri dish and inject or <laughs> deposit a bunch of different dermal fillers on a, a plate or whatnot and use Hylinex and watch it. Watch what happens. See for yourself the rate of breakdown of different types of hyaluronic acid gels. It's very interesting. So now on to how do we inject hyaluronidase? Do we use a needle? Do we use cannula? Do we use ultrasound? Do we just blindly flood the area? We are still evolving as a medical field and medical specialty, and it's so fascinating to see what is happening. I am a huge proponent of ultrasound. I think that it allows accuracy. It allows definite um, placement of your hyal hyaluronidase without guessing, you know, flooding the area is still fine, but why, why do we do that when we have tools that we can directly visualize where we need to be and how much product is there and, and how to dissolve? I think it's super important. I think it makes it more effective for your patients. It's more effective treatment. You're not just injecting blindly. So I use a combination of needle or cannula. If you're trying to dissolve a discrete nodule and break through that nodule, obviously a needle is more ideal, but in general cannula I think is more comfortable. And that brings me to, does it burn? Does Hylinex burn? And I don't think that the pure product, specifically Hyalinex I'm speaking about because that's what I use in my practice, I don't think it burns, but some patients think it does. And the addition of lidocaine, I believe, can also make it a little bit more stingy, even though the, the later onset of effect is that you become a little bit numb, but lidocaine can sting. And now there are ideas surrounding bicarb and adding a little bit of bicarb to your Hylinex to make it more comfortable. I've actually tried this. It does, it does seem to take the edge off and patients like it. So I think everyone is unique and, and individualized when it comes to these treatments. I think lips tend to burn a little bit more than other areas of the face, but having a conversation with your patient, seeing if you should numb that or not, that's all about, you know, that can vary from patient to patient. But those are some ideas. And then one other idea surrounding product placement. So I've had patients recently, tons of dissolving is happening in my practice, but I've had patients recently that say, oh, my filler's moved. And they'll say, as you know, filler moves. And I just listen and absorb. And you know, our face is mobile. We are animating all the time, every day. And it's hard to predict if we um, are moving every day, what is happening? We're learning and growing in this field, as I mentioned before. So there are some thoughts surrounding if product is placed in the SMAS, the superficial musculoaponeurotic system, which is the third layer. You have skin, superficial fat, SMAS, deep fat bone in general, right? That's kind of the structure, not exactly that in every area of the face. However, if we inject product into the SMAS, some believe and some have shown that it is more readily able to slightly shift, okay? And I think there needs to be more research done, which I am hopefully getting involved in here shortly. But we need to analyze filler in the SMAS and what, it ha what happens. We do know and we have shown in studies that, not me specifically, but Leonie Schelke, one of my amazing mentors, she um, has shown and continues to do research on this, that when dermal filler or any product is placed in the SMAS, it affects animation. It affects the way the muscles move. It affects the smile. And I'm sure if you all are listening and you're in aesthetics and you've seen patients that have full cheeks, but their smile looks like they're constricting or they're working hard. Their eyes appear a little bit strained. They are squinting slightly and the smile appears unnatural or tight. I don't know a better way to put it. When they smile, and there's filler in the SMAS, which we're seeing is, a, is oftentimes the case, and I've dissolved a bunch of these cases recently. The smile, the smile relaxes immediately when that product is gone. Uh, again, still more research needs to be done, but it's, 
it's something to do with the SMAS and product in the SMAS, which creates an expanded SMAS and an unauthentic, unnatural appearing smile. And the patients will feel it immediately. They'll feel the relief. They feel they can smile wider and bigger. Their eyes appear more open. It's very fascinating to watch and see. So hopefully I'll be able to add on to this in the future. I hope you guys learned something from this. Hyaluronidase should be in all of your practices if you're aesthetic providers, at least 24 vials at all times. Check the expiration dates. And also get an ultrasound if you guys are interested in trainings. I offer them here. I also know so many other amazing providers around the world that do training. So reach out, let me know. And thank you for listening on YouTube. Hit subscribe if you haven't. Like, comment, let me say hi to me, whatever you want to do. I can't wait to see you guys next time.